Question 10 from Section 2 of the 2022 Higher Physics Examination from the SQA. A student is carrying out an experiment to investigate the interference of sound waves. Two identical speakers, L1 and L2, are connected to a signal generator as shown in the diagram below. Now you can see the signal generator, which produces the electrical signal for the, the sounds. That's transmitted through the speakers L1 and L2. And a sound level meter is moved along line A and B, and it picks up these maximum sounds and minimum sounds. The diagram is not drawn to scale. Now, a sound level meter is moved from A to B, as I've just said, and a series of maxima and minima are detected. Now, for one mark, we're asked to say the following. The sound waves emitted from the loudspeakers are coherent. And we're asked to explain what is meant by the term coherent. Now, if you have two waves, they are coherent if they follow the following examples. So they must have the same frequency. They must have the same wavelength. They must have the same velocity. And this last one here is perhaps the most difficult one to understand is they must have a constant phase relationship, which means one wave produced and the other wave coming after it must almost, if you can think of it, keep the same distance between them. I'll show you what I mean by a diagram down here from this. This will be a computer program to show us. Now, I'll fully explain it more on the, on the website. But here we have uh, an example. If you see the left-hand picture, they have two rotating arrows. You can imagine them to be like hands on a clock. And they're rotating anti-clockwise. But do you notice that the angle between the two of them is, is exactly the same in every part of the journey? You can see it there. As every part of the cycle, you can see that the angle between them remains the same. This is what we mean by a constant phase difference, because we can chart the particular, the Y amplitude for the, both the blue and the red arrows there, and you can see from the diagram that the waves produced are waves, because objects going around in a circle, believe it or not, are in fact very reminiscent of waves. So you can see as these two arrows move round, we say they're in phase. If you look at the wave pattern of them, you can see that the blue wave peaks first and then the red wave peaks a few seconds later. But as we go further into that journey, you can see that the time between the blue wave peaking and the red wave peaking is always the same. So we say they are constantly in they constantly have a phase difference. So we need to have two waves that act like that, having a constant phase difference, in order to satisfy uh, what we mean by interference. So back up to our list again, you can see that for waves to be coherent, they have to have the same frequency, they have to have the same wavelength, they have the same velocity, and they have to have that constant phase relationship. Part B. Explain, in terms of waves, how a maximum is produced. Well, we take a look at a picture of the waves arriving. We can see this might be the wave train arriving from the first speaker. And this one here might be the wave train arriving from the second speaker. Now, in order to have maximum sound, there must be what we call constructive interference taking place. And constructive interference takes place when the waves arrive in such a way that the crest of one meets the crest of the other, they add together to produce a bigger wave. So we can say that the crests add to crest to give a bigger wave. That's what we mean by constructive interference. Another way you can say it is that the waves with no phase difference in between them, you can see that the no phase difference, remember we talked about earlier, a phase difference is slightly there, when one wave is slightly ahead of the other, and as long as they keep that distance apart. But in order to have constructive interference to produce a maximum wave, that phase difference must be zero, and the waves must overlap so that crests meet crests to add to give bigger crests. Another way you can say it is that the path difference between the two journeys each wave makes must be a whole number of wavelengths. And you can see that in the diagram here. You can see this might be the path one wave takes, but if this other sound wave travels a distance and it arrives like that, its distance is one full wavelength, it's still going to add constructively 
to give you a loud sound. So you can draw, use the diagram to give your answer to this one. That's what we mean by constructive interference. Two waves arrive either uh, to give you a path difference, which is a whole number of wavelengths. There's no weight, no phase difference between them. Or you can see the crest adds to crest to give a bigger crest. And this is what we mean by constructive interference. The two waves add together in such a way that those two crests add together to give you a bigger crest. And therefore that creates a maximum sound. Question 10 continued part C. The wavelength of the sound waves is 0 0.400 metres. The distance from L2 to the third order maximum at point P is 6 metres. And we have to determine the distance from L1 to P in that diagram. Now we know that we're focusing on the third order maximum and the condition in order to hear a third order maximum is that the path difference, and I'll write this down here, the path difference must be equal to 3 lambda. So that's the condition for to hear a third maximum loud sound. The path difference must be equal to 3 lambda. So how do we look at the physical path difference here? Well, we know the distance from L2 to P. Take away L1 to P, and that should equal to 3 wavelengths. But we're told what the wavelength is, and the wavelength is 0 0.40 metres. So that's going to give us 3 times 0 0.4 meters so we can work that out we're told that the distance l2 to the third uh, maximum that's l2p is going to be six meters so we have to find uh, this distance here l1 to p so we know l2p is going to be equal to six meters so we put that in there six meters take away l1p that's the distance we're looking for and that's going to equal to three times 0 0.4 which is going to give you 1.200 meters so we've got a little equation here we've got the path difference here and we've got the answer to the path difference so if we just solve that the equation we can take l1p over to the other side and take the the 6.00 and take away the 1.20. So we end up with this equation here, LP, L1 to P is going to equal to uh, 6.00, take away 1.200, and that's going to be metres. So we work that out, we get an answer of 4.800 metres. So that path from L1 to P must be 4.800 metres. Part D. A second student in the room is wearing a pair of active noise cancelling ANC headphones. The student switches on the ANC function and the sound level from the loudspeakers heard by the student decreases significantly. And for one mark we're asked to name the type of interference that the headphones use to reduce the sound level. Well we just looked at constructive interference where we have a crest meeting a crest uh, to give you a bigger crest. So in this case, we're producing no sound, the minimum sound, therefore it must be destructive interference. And we can draw a picture to show what happens as well when the waves arrive. Even though you just asked to name it, destructive interference will give you the mark. It's better to know why that's the case. There's one, the, the wave coming from the, uh, from the speaker, and inside the electronics, the wave is turned like that. And you end up, as you can see in the diagram, with a crest meeting a trough and a crest meeting a trough and that gives you a cancellation because when a crest meets a trough it cancels out so you get the wave like that you get a minimum sound so in order to reduce the sound significantly uh, the type of interference uh, that, you, that the headphones use is called a destructive interference <laughs>